Looking for ideas to build an exhibition model railway during lockdown? Let me inspire you to build an amazing layout. In the first five parts of my inspiration series, I concentrated on small layouts that could be built by one person. However, I know a lot of you would love to build much bigger projects. How can one person build a large layout without it taking years to complete? Well, there is a way. Watch this video from the West of Sussex Engage group. This Engage layout is from the West Sussex Engage Model Railway Club. This layout is another large multi-operator operation. However, the design concept is quite novel. It is a modular construction built to a standardised pattern. Club members own individual modules that are all 6 feet long and varying widths from 12 feet to 30 inches. There are three common lines running through each module, which are controlled from the fiddle yard. The module owner can add their own lines to suit the layout, ensuring they are isolated from the three main lines. The module owner controls their own stock within their module. When the club goes to an exhibition, they find out how much space they can occupy. Modules are then allocated a position in the layout. The concept is very flexible, ranging from layouts that are single end-to-end -to, -end to over 50 feet square. The two main loops can be either DC or DCC, dependent on the size and stock available. The design standards allow for rapid setup at an exhibition. At the Ting show, the layout took only two hours to establish. My thanks to Ian Redman from the club for the information. The key to large projects is standardisation. Contact your friends or clubmates and come up with a set of rules that everyone can use to build individual boards within a much larger project. I've put a link to the web page that the West Sussex Group have adopted as their standard in the description below. You don't have to use their standards. As long as you all adopt the same rules and stick by them. Here are a few large layouts to inspire you. This N-gauge layout is Dragonby, exhibited by Jeff Butler. Dragonby is a continuous loop set in the East Midlands northeast area. At 16 feet by 4 feet across four boards, the layout is a perfect showcase for scale length modern trains in N-gauge and liveries that would be seen in the area. It has a four-track main line and is operated by four operators in the contemporary privatisation era, featuring a constant procession of modern passenger and freight trains. These are represented by class 60s, 67s, 70s and a multitude of HSTs and Voyagers. Buildings are all scratch-built. Track and points are Pico Code 80. Stock is a mixture of Graham Farish and Dapol although there are a couple of 3D printed wagons. All stock is weathered. My thanks to Jeff for the information. Leaven Bank, modelled in N-Gage and presented by Glenrother's Model Railway Club. Leaven Bank, a fictional quadruple track location on the Scott Rail region of the East Coast Main Line, and set in the post-privatisation era of around 1995 to the present day. Two fast passenger lines are sandwiched by slower freight lines on the outside. The platforms of the Liebenbank station, with its station building located above the platform, is built as an island design extending out from the tunnel under the town. The station also features two bay platforms for terminating local trains. Heading away from the station and the tunnel, trains pass the freight loops, the small diesel multiple unit depot and the container terminal. At the far end of the layout from the station, trains pass the rail served cement works 
which generates considerable cement, gravel and aggregates traffic for the railway. Here you can view the Engage Layout Marks Engels Platz, exhibited by Bill Roberts. The layout represents an S-Bahn station in former East Berlin and is set in the spring of 1990, just after the fall of the Berlin Wall. As well as commuter trains on the S-Bahn, the layout features interzonal trains moving across the island, which was West Berlin. The layout is 20 feet long and consists of four 4 feet by 2 feet boards and two 2 feet by 2 feet boards. Main layout buildings are all scratch built, with the buildings on the back scene being constructed from kits. Control is analog DC. Stock is a mixture of Fleischmann and Trix. My thanks to Bill for supplying the information. Here you can view the N-gauge layout Lock Tat, exhibited by Adrian Lamborn. Lock Tat is a layout based on the Loch Carron area of the West Highlands of Scotland, depicting the splendour of Scottish scenery. The architecture and buildings are typical for a line built by the North British Railway and Distillery. The layout is 16 feet by 8 feet, with buildings that are a mixture of scratch build and kits. Some of the trees are made using lost wax casting. Control is analogue DC and stock is a mixture of Graham Farish, Backman and Dapol. My thanks to Adrian for the information. This N-gauge layout is Mohawk Loops, exhibited by Peter Brackenbury. Mohawk Loops is an imaginary line in the foothills of the Rockies, west of Denver and Cheyenne. It depicts present day operations on a typical US set of passing loops on a single transcontinental main line. A variety of freight and passenger trains can be seen. The layout is 20 feet 6 inches by 2 foot 6 inches across five boards and took a year to make. All buildings are scratch built with rolling stock from Cato and Atlas. My thanks to Peter for the information. This N-gauge layout is Lord Junction exhibited by the East Nuke Model Railway Club. Law Junction is a model of the real location on the west coast main line between Carstairs and Motherwell, where freight trains from Moss End Yard and local passenger trains via Wishaw diverge from the main line. The layout includes the freight terminal next to the junction yard and is set in the approximate period of 2003 to 2006. Most of the layout is built accurately to scale, although some compression of length has been required in the junction area. The layout shows a railway in the landscape rather than just the railway itself. Features to look out for include the buildings, all scratch built from photographs taken at the site, the overhead electrification equipment, which is non-functional in the model, and the operating colour light signals which are controlled using modules by Heathcote Electronics. Track is Pico and the backstage fiddle yard is sectioned to allow a maximum of 30 trains in each direction. Rolling stock is a mixture of ready to run and kit built using standard N-gauge couplings. Container trains use C-rail containers which were initially a byproduct of this layout project. So I'm, uh, I'm here with Eric and uh, he's going to describe his, his layout to us. Uh. Clifton and Lowther came about because I needed another exhibition layout. My previous one was life expired. And the reason I chose the location, it's a real location on the West Coast Main Line and it's a place I remember quite well from my youth. So it's engaged, although the, the scenic section on the front does in, employ... Um, a fine scale type track system. It uses code 40 rail but it's still to 9 mil gauge so you can run standard N gauge stuff on it. The era I remember is sort of the late 50s and early 60s when I was a younger child and the cottages that are modelled on the thing are actually 
based on the cottages where one of my uncles used to live that we visited quite regularly. The construction of the layout took about two years. The fiddle yard at the back, which was designed to feed trains to the front, I think there's 32 trains in there. Um, that uses Pico Code 55. Controls is, we use Kemp panel controls through um, homemade control panels uh, for the points and the track circuits. And the fiddle yard points work with diode matrices. So you press one button to send the train in and press the button at the other end to send the train down. So it's in an out system. And that sets all the points for that road, for that track. Uh, and that's all done with diode matrices. There's, there's eight boards under the layout for those to control those points. Designing diode matrices, I've never done that before. And the other one was fitting the road system in on the, on the scenic section. The way I designed the, the scenery was to take account of the existing roads that were around that area. And the challenge there was to take the Faller model, which is basically a Mercedes Benz, and, and try and make it somewhat like an English outline model. Uh, and that was achieved by using commercial bodies, the likes of Oxford and BT. It needs three, three lorries to work the system. As one lorry comes in, it, there's a sensor in the road, so it releases the parking stop that the vehicle in front of, so that drives off. And then the vehicle that's coming in stops on there and waits for someone to come behind to let that one go around. There's only ever one goes down the front at one time because the roads are too narrow. Trains are based on real trains. You know, the Royal Scott. Uh, there's a tender first 9F with a lot of empty mineral wagons that goes to Harrison's side. That was a shunt trip from Carlisle two or three times a week. Um, Exhibition-wise, well, it all splits down into six, eight, eight boards and goes in two racks. It goes in the back of the van. And then a big box for all the bits and pieces. <laughs> lighting and vaccines and things like that. Here you can view the N-Gage layout Billingham, exhibited by John Parvin. Billingham is a town located in the northeast of England, constructed to British N-Gage standards. The scenic area measures six feet in length by 22 inches in depth. Set in the years 1965 to 1966, general goods traffic to the yard was in decline. The era being represented allows the running of both steam and diesel locomotives. Passengers meanwhile are provided with the then modern first generation diesel multiple units. The layout is conventionally wide for DC running, the track work comprising the extensive use of Pico Code 80, with the exception of a Shinohara three-way turnout incorporated into the goods yard. Points are operated by electric motors and a system of permanent magnets is used for remote uncoupling of various wagons within the goods yard. Stock is Graham Farish with the crane supplied by Osborne Cranes. My thanks to John for the information. I'm here with Aaron from the East Nuke Model Railway Club. The new layout, Garbridge and St Andrews, an engaged layout based in the late 50s through to the point when the coastline shot in 1965. The layout has been a long time in its creation. Garbridge is pretty much accurate in its size. St Andrews size a wee bit foreshortened, um, just to try and get it to work in on this, the available baseboards. All the buildings are all scratch built, and it's where the work goes in. I think the pair of us that have done the buildings, Duncan Stewart and myself, uh, Duncan mostly did Garbridge, and I mostly did St Andrews. Building of the buildings, research, that's what soaks your time up. You learn a lot about the history of an area when you build a prototype. You would never build a layout like that out of your imagination. Take the St Andrews station. Well, that was the second one in St Andrews. That was only opened and created once the coastline was built. The first one was down at the links where the old course hotel is. You know, so obviously when they built the extension to Creole, the station came up into the town a bit closer. And then in the fifties, they built the bus garage next to it and they built the bus stances and all in the, the offices and in its day St Andrews was held up as a model of modern transport station right next to the bus garage and the bus stances 
you couldn't have thought of a better way of doing it. It's analogue, it's turned the power on and the trains move. There's no point having sound at an exhibition end gauge layout. The point works all controlled, push button, but it's done electronically through a brain. There's modules under the baseboards that control the points. All the points in the fronts are like cobalt motors. The fiddle yard itself goes with other club layouts. There's a lot of money and investment and time and effort goes into building fiddle yards, so you don't build a new one for every layout. It's its first outing as a finished layout, so there was the odd wiring issue to sort out because you're marrying in a fiddle yard and for the first couple of shows, you know, you're, you tend to be debugging things. You're getting used to running it as well. You know, make sure the points are clean as well because when you don't run layouts at the clubs, we don't run them much. You know, things get dirty when you're building new layouts, but once, it, once you get the first out and out of the way, then make your list up of debugging jobs and get on with it. We've had a point break in the fiddle yard already, but the fiddle yard's 15 years old. Here you can view Dentdale, an N-gauge layout exhibited by Bob Taylor, Wayne Webb and Tony Fraser. The layout is inspired by the moorland sections of the Settle to Carlisle Railway in the Yorkshire Dales. Dentdale runs from the north entrance of the Bleemore Tunnel crosses the Dent Head and Arton Gill Viaducts, ending at Dent Station. The station and signal box have been reversed for better viewing. The layout consists of five boards and is 19 foot long. All buildings and viaducts are scratch built. The layout is analog, controlled by two operators. Rolling stock is a mixture of Graham Farish, Dapol and N-Gage Society models. My thanks to Wayne Webb who supplied the information. Check out other content that I have by selecting the playlist. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you there.